The sphenoid is the keystone to the skull and provides the rhythm for the other cranial bones. Both the falx and the tentorium attach to the sphenoid. The sphenoid nosedives during flexion, then pauses and reverses this motion in extension, creating a lazy eight pattern. In the opposite motion model, each wing of the sphenoid alternately moves into flexion. The sphenoid and the occiput are joined at the sphenobasilar junction. It is because of this sacrum occiput sphenoid connection that clients will frequently feel their sinuses clear or experience some other sensation in their head while you are working on their sacrum. The pituitary gland rests next to the sphenoid. If the sphenoid is compromised in its motion, it can affect the pituitary and the entire endocrine system. Check the sphenoid for restriction when clients have headaches, sinusitis, back pain, learning disabilities, temporal mandibular joint dysfunction, or vision problems. Our first technique is the sphenoid release. Sit at the head of the table and lightly rest your fingers on the occiput. Place your thumbs over the wings of the sphenoid bone. As the sphenoid is halfway between flexion and extension, very gently encourage the greater wings to move posterior or towards the table. This motion compresses the sphenoid towards the occiput. Hold the sphenoid in compression for a few seconds until you feel it start to gather energy or ask to be decompressed. Now with your thumb pads, gently guide and encourage the greater wings in an anterior direction or towards the ceiling. As you feel the sphenoid float upwards, you will notice a freer and larger cranial rhythm. This is the basic technique. The next step is to evaluate for specific motion in the sphenoid bone by encouraging motion in the following directions. Flexion, extension, side bending, torsion, translation superior and then inferiorly, if there is an obvious sense of ease in one direction and bind in the other, then you have discovered a lesion. To correct this, guide the bone into the direction of ease and then follow the inherent motion. Coronal shear. After performing the basic sphenoid technique, you may want to listen more deeply to the bone, especially if you have noticed a movement pattern that seems irregular. If the sphenoid seems to be stuck or severely compressed, use the coronal shear technique. It is one of the most effective techniques to sense the movement in the sphenobasilar joint. This grip frees the coronal suture and facilitates motility in the sphenoid and occiput. It is used most often to treat and monitor severe trauma which result in a compression lesion. A compression lesion is felt as no movement. This lesion is the most dysfunctional that can be felt. If your client has been in an accident or has had a blow to the head, she may have a compression lesion or vertical and lateral strain. You will need a finger cot for your little finger or a glove. Place these on your right hand. Cradle your client's occiput in your left hand. Hold for a few minutes to begin feeling the cranial rhythm in your hand. Allow your client to settle into this hold before you engage your right hand. Have your client moisten her lips and open her mouth. Slowly and gently slide your little finger along the outer surface of her upper teeth on the left side of her face. Place your middle finger on the greater wing of her left sphenoid, your thumb on the right wing of sphenoid, and allow the hand wedge between your thumb and index finger to rest near her third eye. The grip is